Let's add this beautiful dark blue style on this image using only Lightroom Classic for the editing. As always, you can follow along this Lightroom tutorial by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of the video. And now, let's jump into it. So that's our RAW file and the very first thing I want to do before any basic adjustments is I want to clean up some of these tree branches. Therefore, let's click on the remove tool and here I want to make sure to use the generative AI and I also want to make sure to not check detect objects because that didn't work the last time I tested it on this scene. So all I'm going to do is with this remove mode active, I'm going to brush over all these tree branches very roughly. Let's actually make the brush a little bigger by using the mouse wheel. I just continue selecting all these tree branches. Okay, once we made our selection, all we need to do is click on the remove button right here. Lightroom will give us different variations in case it might not look clean enough. You can see there's some shadow left over, so I want to go through all these variations looking for a clean version. Right here, that, that's looking quite okay, but we still need to clean up some more. So I'm just going to brush over all these leftover things one more time. And I actually want to get rid of this tree branch overlapping our subject as well. Okay, let's see what Lightroom will do. Click on remove. All right, that's looking perfect. Now with the image cleaned up, we can start with the basic adjustments. So let's go ahead, open up the basic panel and right away I want to work on the white balance. What I'm going to do for this shot is to focus on the histogram as I adjust the temperature slider. Right now you can see three peaks which are kind of spread right here. These three peaks are basically the bright background and you can see the blue peak being kind of separated from the rest. This indicates a blue color cast which we can also see in the blue background. So for the basic adjustments I try to fix it by bringing up the temperature until these three peaks are aligning. And right around here we do have a nice natural color. This doesn't mean I'm going to keep this color for the whole editing process. It just serves as the base for the upcoming edits. Then again, looking at this again, you can see this shot is rather dark, so I'm going to change it by slightly bringing up the exposure. I'm also going to raise the shadows very carefully. Let's also raise the blacks to brighten up the darkest areas of the image. And what we can do now is to bring up the whites and we can push them quite heavily, which will make mostly the background brighter but it really helps to add some punch to this image. Again, at this point, it might look weird, but it's just the base of the editing. Most of the more impactful changes will come at a later point with a bit of masking. For now, we just want to get the base image right to see what we can do with the rest of the image. Then let's also add a little bit of texture. I'm also going to bring down the vibrance just a little bit kind of desaturating the whole image this way. And there we have the image after the basic adjustments. We can compare to before real quick and you can see the white balance is much, much better. We don't have this ugly blue color cast anymore. And also we do have much more brightness and details even in the shadows of the subject. What I want to do next, actually, I also want to change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will help bring out even more details in the shadows of the subject as the standard profile will just lessen the contrast very, very gently. But now let's jump into the masking. And with the masking, we can nicely work on this dark blue look. So what I want to do first is to change the background. Remember with the basic adjustments, we changed the white balance quite heavily to make it more natural. With the masking, I want to add my own look for this image. That means I'm going to change the background, adding a very cold dark blue tone to most of the background without affecting the warmth of the subject. So what I'm going to do now is to use a linear gradient and I'm going to drag it up from the bottom part. I want the bottom part of the image to be the darkest part. And of course we don't want to change the subject. So we need to subtract a select subject mask from this linear gradient. And what we can do now is to bring down the exposure, which will make the background darker without affecting the subject. All right, now we made it darker, but now let's also introduce some more coldness. We can do that by simply bringing down the temperature and I'm going to bring it down quite a bit because I love the color combination of the blue background against the orange yellow tones of the subject. So with just one mask, we made this image look much more interesting, but we can further enhance it. Let's continue 
And for that, let's create a subject mask. Again, we only want to affect the background. So let's invert this mask by clicking this checkbox right here. And then I want to further modify this mask by subtracting a radial gradient. And this will be our light effect, which is coming in this image from the top. And I want to make sure it's nicely pointed towards our subject like this. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and now again, I'm making pretty much the whole background except for this bright spot darker by bringing down the exposure. Very, very gently. We are going to stack multiple different masks on top of each other. So we want to make sure to only use very tiny adjustments. And again, we can bring down the temperature, introducing more coldness to the background. Wonderful, this is looking great. Now let me deactivate these two masks so you can see what a difference this makes already. This was our image after the basic adjustments and here we have it with just two masks applied on top of it. I want to further continue modifying the background. I'm going to use a linear gradient for that and I want to make it come in from the right side like this. So we don't want to affect the subject one more time. Let's subtract a select subject mask. If you're looking closely enough, you can see some parts between the feathers of the bird, which are now not selected as well. If you're aiming for the highest quality, this will be a problem. What we can try is to add another mask and I'm choosing the brush tool here. I'm making sure to check all the mask and I'm just trying to paint over this wide area. So you can see with these very tiny areas, the brush tool isn't working as expected. So I guess if you want to really have the highest quality, you want to use Photoshop for advanced masking like this. But for the purpose of this video, this is totally fine what we have right here. So again, let me keep on darkening the background by bringing down the exposure. I'm going to make it quite a bit darker because we are further away from the subject. And the closer to the border we are, the darker I want the image to be. So this is basically serving as a vignetting effect, guiding the viewer's eye through the image. And again, I also want to make this a little colder by bringing down the temperature again. That's looking wonderful. And of course, we can do the same on the left side. So again, I'm using another linear gradient. And again, we want to modify this mask, subtracting a subject mask. Then Let's bring down the exposure just a little bit like this. And also let's bring down the temperature again. Perfect. Now that we have changed the background by making things darker, we can also change the background by making things brighter. And therefore we are going to use a radial gradient. We're going to make it nice and big like this. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner so we do have some kind of pointy light and I'm going to place the center of this radial gradient outside of the image to have a more natural effect. I'm also going to rotate it a little bit so it doesn't come straight down from the top. Then I'm going to place it right here leading towards the subject. You can see it's basically covering its face right now. Of course, we don't want to make the subject brighter, just the background. So again, we need to subtract the subject mask and just like that, all we need to do now is to bring up the exposure, creating this light beam effect, which just helps introducing contrast between subject and background. Now let's work on the subject itself. I'm going to create a simple subject mask. And what I want to do in here is to first, I want to add some more sharpness by bringing up the texture. All right. I am also going to add some contrast. Let's see what this will do. I really like the contrast effect, but I think the subject is becoming a little too dark. So what I want to do next is to bring up the whites. And I think I want to further bring up the shadows like this. Wonderful. Now let's also bring down the saturation just a little bit because I think the bird itself becomes a little bit too saturated. At the same time, I want to bring up the white balance temperature for the subject just to have some more color contrast between subject and background. All right, wonderful. And what I want to do as well is to work on the bird's eye. Therefore, I am going to use, let's use a brush and I want to set up the brush. I'm going to bring down the feather all the way and we need to adjust brush size. I'm just going to use the mouse wheel for that. 
and then just paint over the eye like this. Okay, what I want to do in here is to make the eye pop. How can we do that? I'm going to start by raising the clarity. Then what I want to do as well is to bring up the whites, making the eye look a little bit brighter this way. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation for the eye itself. So just like this. Now we can't really see a thing because of that brush icon. You could zoom in there. What you can also do is to deactivate those edit pins down below from always to never. And just like that, we can see what's happening with the eye. So that's before. And here we have the adjusted eye. Much better. Then I also want to brighten up the bird's head. So let me choose a select subject mask one more time. And I only want to affect a very certain area. So let's click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose brush. I'm just going to brush over the bright part of the bird. Now we do have parts of its wing selected as well. So I want to further modify this mask, subtracting a brush. And this time it's very important to use a low amount of feather because I want to have a hard edge. Now I'm just clicking in here, trying to brush away the wing from the back of the head, just like that. And what I want to do in here is to make the head brighter by bringing up the whites. Now we're almost done. Just one more thing I want to do, and that is to use a simple linear gradient coming up from the bottom like this. And again, I want to make this area darker and I want to include the subject just to give it some kind of shadow. So I'm going to bring down the highlights this time so we don't make the shadows too deep. Otherwise, we might end up with underexposure and that's really not what we want. So here we have the image after the masking adjustments. And now let me turn off all the masks so we can see the transformation from our base image to this. This is looking great. Now the only thing left to do is some color grading. Let's start in the color mixer. The first thing I want to do is to make the bird slightly brighter by bringing up the orange luminance. So let's raise it a little bit, introducing some more brightness to the orange tones of those feathers. And that's looking great. Now I want to head into the saturation tab. I want to bring down the yellow saturation quite a bit because I think it's a little too overwhelming. And at the same time, I want to bring up the orange tones and let's maybe even bring up the blue tones so we do have some more color contrast. Wonderful. I do think I want to improve that blue look a little more by using some split toning in the color grading tab, mainly for the shadows and the mid tones. So let's start with the shadows. I'm going to set up the hue to something very cold and I'm only going to raise the saturation a little bit. I just want to have a hint of blue in the shadows. Then let's also use the midtones. Again, I'm setting up the hue, going for a very cold color tone right here. And again, using only very low amounts of saturation to not overdo it with the blue tones. Perfect. Let's go down into the calibration tab. That's just something I do for all my images because I think it looks cool. I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue, which will have a really nice effect on the blue tones, but also the subject itself. Now let's bring up the saturation and we're done with the color grading. At this point, the only thing left to do is the sharpening. Let's open up the details tab. I'm going to bring down the radius. Let's increase the details all the way up. Then really important for this scene, we want to hold on the Alt key while we apply masking. And we are going up to a point where we nicely have the subject selected like this. And then it's time to bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. So there we have it. That's the image after the only a little bit of Lightroom editing, no Photoshop needed. Let me know what you think of that. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments as well. And thank you so much for watching this video.